Okay, we're going to get started with a little bit of uh, some plant and gardening tips and ideas. Some of the tips we're going to just more talk about. It's a little hard to show a big gardening demonstration in this kind of setting, but a um, couple things I wanted to mention as far as like outdoor gardening. A lot of you guys may have uh, areas worked and tilled already, and you know you're ahead of the game. If you haven't, um, hopefully we have this problem for a little bit of soils being a little wet. We don't want to work our soil if it's too wet. Uh, as the tiller or the plow goes, it rolls that soil and you get these clods. They dry out and a lot of times you're stuck with them for the whole season. So when you're turning that soil, you want to maybe take a spade and shovel a little bit up. Take a handful of it and when you squeeze it, you want it to stick together but if you kind of bounce it around or shake it a little bit in your hand you want it to come apart a little bit and that's the ideal moisture level for tilling if you can't even get it to stick together and we work that soil we're going to have dust and then that wants to make a real hard crust on our soil so be aware of some of those things the other thing i'm going to mention i get a lot of people that get their soil tested which is a great thing i would do that maybe not every year but every few years if you're using that same area and a lot of people bring them in and I'll help them get the right thing for it. But probably one of the number one things we find that people are needing here, um, we are sitting on top of a huge deposit of limestone. So our pH, the acidity of our soil is very high, we're basic, and so we're needing to add sulfur. And if you haven't worked your soil yet, I put mine on first, work it in. It takes a few weeks to work, but it acidifies that soil and one, the plants just like that better to grow in, but two, we see a lot of phosphorus in those tests, so we don't usually have to add a lot, but if our pH is real high, they can't take up some of that, so that kind of helps make some of the nutrients available. And if anyone here has ever seen pin oak trees growing in Kansas, they're usually real pale yellow, and they do iron injections and things like that for them. Well, it's not that we don't have iron in our soil, we do, it's just that that soil is so alkaline they can't take it up. So that's just another example of how that pH is really important. So soil, sulfur, we have little bags if you just have a little garden area or if you're doing an actual garden or quite a few beds or your lawns, we do a 50 pound sack. The other one that I work into my garden a lot of times and I'm gonna use some today in my next demonstration is gypsum. Gypsum is really a good product. Um, back east, they use a lot of lime in their gardens and their landscapes to put that calcium that plants need, make strong cell walls, just like strong bones and people. So we don't want to add lime here, though, because it's basic. It's going to push that pH the wrong way again. Well, gypsum is calcium sulfate. So instead of it's bonded to a sulfur molecule. So it's gonna be slightly acidic, not very much, but it's gonna add that calcium and not push our thing the wrong way. And that's really important um, in my garden for tomatoes that get blossom end rot, that black sunken spot on the bottom, that's low levels of calcium. So you can help avoid that. And it's just a good general plant health makes a stronger, sturdier plant. So those would be some things you could mix in there. Um, as far as some different planting ideas I wanted to talk about, we have these moss liners. A lot of people are familiar with the cocoa liners. They're that kind of more brown, woven-y stuff. And they're okay. Personally, I don't like them very well because, well, depending on what I'm growing. Because when you water them, as soon as you water, it's pouring right through. And then, you know, if we're in Kansas, we could have a little bit of wind. Well, that wind blows right through that loose weave of those things and they dry out really, really quick. So a better alternative to that is the moss liner. And when you get it, this is what it looks like. It's really thin, but you put it in your pot and you add the soil and you water it in and you can come up when we get done, take a look at this too. It swells up. It's actually probably inch and a quarter, inch and a half thick. Well, when you water your plant, the soil gets wet, that moss absorbs a lot of water too and holds more water that way, and it's a real tight mesh, so you don't get that wind drying. So they're a lot happier plants that way. And they come, you know, 12, 14, 16, or 18 inch sizes. Um, you can buy the basket hanger by itself. You can get all the pieces however we want to do it. 
Um, but they're a really great thing. And the other thing I like about them is once they're hydrated, you can cut holes in them and do side planting with them. I've done a lot of odd shaped pots people bring in to me that need a liner. Well, you can just break this up, put the pieces in, put your soil in. Once you water it, it all fluffs out. So, you know, somebody will bring me in something real oval shaped that's mesh on the side or um, actually I did a drawer from an old refrigerator that was a like a vegetable bin kind of thing and we just lined it and watered it so it had sides to it. But I did this last year and so I thought I'd show it to people this year. Um, I did herbs in mine and they did very well and as I went through and planted these there's a couple of them that get a little bit taller so I put my basil a little bit off to the side and then um, I've got some rosemary on this side. It can get big but it's also one that grows pretty slow when it's cool so I didn't want it up here by the basil where it'd get crowded out. Uh, put some oregano. This would be kind of an Italian planter. And then a little bit of um, some thyme as well. And so I've got some different herbs in here and I can hang this off the back patio. I've got a sliding door, go out and clip them and have some fresh herbs that way. But since I'm gonna have it hanging there, I wanted it to look pretty too. So I went through and cut some holes in there. I just used a serrated knife cleaned a little bit of soil off the plant so I could fit them in that hole, tucked them in there and then took that piece of moss I cut out and tucked it back around to seal that hole up. And so now I was kind of joking, it's my cool rad herb planter because the two verbena I used is cool blue and rad red. Well, both of those are a cascading plant. So as it grows, they'll be hanging down, have some nice flower and decoration for my patio. But then I've got all my herbs I want to use right on top. And so that's kind of the first thing I wanted to show and talk about. Um, I've got another planter and some stuff we'll talk about yet on there. One thing I did want to mention, Tanya's talking about some of these succulents. We have these little succulent gardens and they are grown with anywhere from four to six different plants in them. And people use these in a lot of different containers. I have some people that will take them apart and use them all as individuals. Or I've had people bring some in that they've had for about a year in this pot that's pretty big. And we just put it in a bigger pot and not tear them all apart. And they'll just fill out into that space they had. But a real economical choice too, since they were all little cuttings stuck in there, you can get five, four, five, six different plants for $6.99. So they make a good deal on that. And they're all around that gazebo behind us. So uh, that's kind of a fun way to get a nice mix of some smaller plants if you're doing something that way. Or fairy gardens, you can tear them apart and use them in that kind of stuff as well. All right, it looks like they are ready for the next part. So I will go ahead and move my stuff out of here.